we're going to find out a bit more about Jesus, our hero. Now, I've told the adults this recently, okay? But um, when I went to university, I studied a subject called economics, which was a bit silly because economics is all to do with maths, and I don't really like maths. Um, just hands up if you love maths. Who loves maths? Not me. S s quite a few people here. Lots of you love maths. Good. Maths is good. If you're young and you like maths, maybe if you go to university one day, you could study economics because there's loads of maths in it. Anyway, when I was at university, even though I didn't really like maths, I knew I just needed to work hard. I needed to learn the right facts so that I could pass my exams and just be done with it. And that's what I did. I worked pretty hard. I tried to learn the facts and I passed the exams, and I learned complicated things like macroeconomic theory and quantitative modeling and <laughs> econometrics, um, all of which I had to Google uh, this week to remind myself. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing. I, I only learned about those things, those complicated words, to pass my exams, right? If you asked me to explain any of those things now, I would have absolutely no idea, because the things that I learned at university have not really had any bearing on my life. I've not worked as an economist, I've not gone and worked in a bank, I've not become a maths or an economics teacher, and so I've just kind of forgotten it all, and it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things with that. However, the verses that we're going to look at today are all about how being a Christian is the opposite of that, that we learn true facts about Jesus, and those true facts about Jesus should impact our entire life all the time. Becoming a Christian is not like me getting my economics degree, just learning a bunch of facts about Jesus and then I forget about it so I get on with my life. It's learning about Jesus and then Jesus just being absolutely everything for us all of the time. That's what it is to be a Christian. And that's what we're going to see today together. Okay, we're in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. And these are the most important verses in the whole of Colossians. If you understand these two verses, you've got the entire book, which is really good news for all the kids and all the young people who are in today, because you've only got to be in with us this week, and you understand what the whole book's about as we've been going through as grown-ups. And so we're going to pray as we get going. We're going to ask for God's help as we come to His Word, that He might show us amazing true things about Jesus. Would you pray with me? Let's pray, shall we? Loving Father, we ask, please, that you might open our eyes that we might behold wonderful things in your word as it shows us Jesus. Help us to see him and live for him. And we pray in his name. Amen. Okay, here's the first bit of Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. We're going to try and learn the whole thing as we go this morning. All right? And um, there's some actions that I've made up. We're going to try and do those with it to help us learn. Here's the first bit. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. Let's say this together and copy me with the actions. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. Well done. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. Now, Paul here is, is writing it, and he's reminding the Colossians about when they first heard and engaged with the gospel. He's saying to them, listen, you've already received the crucial facts of the gospel and what Jesus has done for you. It's a bit like receiving a gift. That was my doorbell. Hello? Hey, we've got a delivery. Thanks so much, mystery postman. Okay, very good. Now, look at this. Th these are like the crucial facts of the gospel that we've received, okay? That Jesus came as our king, that he died for sin, that he rose again to rule, and that one day he's coming back to judge and renew all things. That's the gospel. That's what we received when we became a Christian. Those are the crucial facts of the gospel. These are the kind of things that you learn in Sunday school, that we learn here in the main building all the time. But Paul, when he's writing to the Colossians, he's saying, look, I don't want you to, to get these true facts about the gospel and then just kind of put them up on the shelf and forget about them. It's not that we learn these true things about Jesus and what he's done so that we can get our entry ticket to heaven and then we just crack on with life and it has no impact on us. No way. Listen to what Paul goes on to say. Okay, here's the next bit of the verse. It says, Con here it's coming. Here we go. 
Continue to live your lives in him. So let's say it together. Here are the actions. Continue to live your lives in him. Right. What does this mean? The words live your lives in him literally mean walk in him, which sounds a bit weird. How can you walk in somebody? I think Paul just means that when we become a Christian, when we trust Jesus as our Savior and Lord, when we believe the true facts of the gospel, it's that we get united to Jesus such that our whole life is now wrapped up in him. Being a Christian is being wrapped up in Jesus. And so Paul tells us to walk in him. So when we receive the true facts about Jesus, that he came as our king, that he died for sin, that he rose to rule, and that he's coming back to judge and renew all things, we don't just leave that information to gather dust. We walk in that. We walk in the light of these true facts about Jesus. Now, does anyone here own a pair of walking boots? Anyone own a pair of walking boots? Some of you, I've got some. I love going on walks. If only we had a pair of Jesus walking boots, they would help me to remember that I walk in him. (coughs) Hang on. I wonder what's in here. (laughs) Can one of you come up and open this for me? (laughs) Evelyn, you come. Let's see what we got. Hopefully you should just better lift the lid up. (gasps) Boots. We got boots. Do you want to get them out? They're pretty dirty, aren't they? (laughs) Boots. Jesus boots. Nice. And another one. Evelyn, thanks so much. You can go sit down. Okay, so let's put our true facts of the gospel up here. And um, I think we've got to put these things on, which I'm already regretting because it takes me about an hour to put walking boots on. (laughs) We'll do our best, okay? And hopefully I won't trip up. Well done. They're so muddy, aren't they? I apologize in advance to whoever's hoovering. And we've got this one on. And can you see, what does it say on the side? Jesus. Jesus. Let's just tuck these in rather than tie them up. There we go. Because otherwise it'll take me ages, B. Well done. Now, here we go. I've got my Jesus walking boots on. And this is going to help me to remember when I'm walking that I'm walking in Jesus. This is the point in Paul's verse, okay? Because now I'm a Christian, my life is all about... Right, now I'm a Christian, my life is all about... Exactly, okay? I don't leave the facts about Jesus up on the shelf and forget about them. They should affect everything. Jesus should shape everything I do. Everything we do is now marked by the fact that, hold on a second, I'm in Christ. I'm wrapped up in Jesus. I'm just walking around and he's everything to me in my life. Which means, don't move on from Jesus. When you first became a Christian, you trusted in him. You trusted in him, but then you've got to keep on going in him. Being a Christian means living a life in him. It means walking in him with your life wrapped up in Jesus. Now, what's that going to look like? It means in everything you do, in everything you say, in everything you watch, in everything you think about. We don't take the boots off when we leave church. Being a Christian means always walking in Jesus with the Spirit's help. And so at school, all right, in the playgrounds, ask God to help your life be all about Jesus. At work, when you're on a team's meeting, ask God to help your life be all about Jesus. At uni, when you're at the, in the pub with mates, ask God to help your life be all about Jesus. That's verse six. Okay, let's say it together with the actions. It's going to be on the screen. Ready, everyone? Let's say it together. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Well done. That's the first big thing that Paul wants to say. All right? We're going to sing a song now that helps us remember what we've been thinking about. The chorus goes, I want to be like Jesus, to walk and talk like Jesus. I want to be like one who follows him. That's exactly what we've been looking at. For this bit in the song, when it says, walk like Jesus, let's pretend we've got our Jesus walking boots on, okay, and go for a walk. Let's stand, we'll sing this together. So we've got our Jesus boots on, okay, we're walking in him. What is that going to look like? Paul gives us four things in the next verse, in verse 7. Let me read it out, and then we're going to break it into bits. Here's what it looks like. Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, 
and overflowing with thankfulness. So here is how we live our lives in Jesus. Here is how we walk in him. Let's take them one by one. First up, rooted in him. Now, there's going to be an action for each bit. We're going to say it together. Let's say it together, and the action is like this. Roots, right? <laughs> Ready? Rooted in him. Good. Now, what has roots? Tell me what has roots. Trees. Trees. Thanks, Alfie. Plants. Good stuff. Right. I reckon we need something like that up on stage in order to help us understand what's going on when we say that we're rooted in him. If only we had one. <laughs> the doorbell. The postman's back. Let's have a look, see what he's got in. Hello? Oh, it's a delivery. Gosh, this is enormous. Okay, here we go. Should we go pop first? Oh, my goodness. Okay, here we go. Well done. Gosh. Okay, here we go. Hey. Uh. There we go. Right. Thanks, postman. <laughs> Let's try and work out what it means to be rooted in Jesus. Can somebody tell me why roots are so important? Why are roots important, Elsie? Okay, so that keeps the plant strong. Any other reason why roots are important? What do roots give the, give the plant? Yeah? Caleb? Water, that's right. They draw up helpful stuff from the soil. Excellent. So roots are really important for food and for strength. If this holly tree doesn't have any roots, it's not going to survive. And it's just going to fall over in the wind like last night. Look, this is so strong. I can't pull it up. It's so strong. It's totally safe and secure. Does someone who thinks they're stronger than me want to come up and have a go? <laughs> Eliza, do you want to come and have a go? See if you can pull this thing up. Watch out. It's a bit spiky, okay? So just grab the bit down here. I reckon you're stronger than me. Go on. Can you do it? Oh, you nearly can. Okay, that'll do. Well done. <laughs> Incredible. Eliza, you're so strong. Well done. Anyway... <laughs> This is secure. Living your life in Jesus looks like putting your roots in him. He is where you start out. He's where you're established. If you're rooted in Jesus, it means you're totally safe and you're totally secure. So what you're learning in Sunday school and what you're learning in Engage and what the adults are learning in here on a Sunday, it's rooting you in Christ. Parents, what you do at home with your kids is the same thing. When you sit around the breakfast table and try amidst the carnage to read a bit of the Bible and pray, you're helping to root your kids in Jesus. When you try and read them a bedtime story that's from the Bible, you're, you're rooting, you're helping to root them in Jesus. And being rooted in Jesus is the best. It's knowing that I am deeply loved by him. It's knowing that he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. It's knowing that he is always with me. So walking in Jesus means being rooted in in him permanently. We're safe, we're secure, he's our saviour, he's our forever friend. But not only that, here's the second thing. Words up on the screen. We're rooted in him and we are built up in him. Okay, here's we're going to say it together. Actions are like this, okay? Built up in him. So we're rooted in him and we're built up in him. Now this is really important. Being a follower of Jesus isn't just about staying the same. We're growing all the time, bit by bit, being built up more into the likeness of Jesus. It's a bit like a height chart. Have any of you seen a height chart before or got one at home? Um, if only I had the one from my house that I could show you. Hey, it's the postman again. This guy, he's better than Prime. Okay, let's um, see what we got. Hello, are you the... Oh, yeah, look, this is a big one. Look at this. Well done. Thanks, Mr. Postman. Oh, cool. It's our height chart from home. Right, let's flip that over. There we go. Okay. Now, this is, we have this by our front door in our house. And um, we all know this, how this works, right? This is what we've got in our hallway. And for Eleanor or Lily or Alfie, we try and remember to measure them every year on their birthday. We try. We, sometimes we forget, don't we? But the kids are growing bit by bit. Um, Eleanor, Eleanor, come up here. Give me a hand. Right, just stand there like we would do at home. That's it. <laughs> But, right, very good. Okay, now, if Eleanor asked me to measure her every day, we wouldn't really see much difference, would we? It would feel like slow growth. If she came and asked to be measured every day, we wouldn't really kind of get anywhere. And you'd hardly be able to tell if she was growing at all. Okay, sit back now. 
And it can feel like that as a Christian sometimes, can't it? You know, am I getting anywhere? Am I growing? Am I actually being built up? I still struggle with this particular sin. The fruit of the Spirit doesn't seem to be very fruitful in my life. But Paul assures us in this verse that even if it feels hardly noticeable on any given day, that if we are walking in Jesus, we are being built up in Christ. It is happening bit by bit by bit, which just means that we are becoming more and more like Jesus. If you're a Christian here today, that is true of you. You are becoming more and more like him, bit by bit by bit. Now, that happens really slowly, okay? Eleanor's not going to wake up tomorrow as a five foot nine grown woman, obviously, okay? That happens really slowly. It's bit by bit, same as being a follower of Jesus. Bit by bit, we're being built up into him. And one day, we will have grown to full height, and we're going to be like Jesus. We're going to be made perfect. We're going to be with him in the new creation, And so a really great thing to pray is, Lord, please help me to be more like Jesus as I walk in him. It's what we sang earlier. I want to be like Jesus. I want to grow up into him. Build me up, Lord, into Jesus. Okay, we're seeing some amazing things, aren't we? We're rooted in Jesus. We're built up in Jesus. Here's the third. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught. Here's the actions. It's going to go strengthened in the faith as you were taught. Let's say it together. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught. So if we're walking in Jesus, then we're rooted in him, we're growing, and we're getting stronger. Now, I'm not very muscly. Um, There are some people, uh, including some people here today even, who are definitely gym buffs. Do you know what that word means? Go and ask your parents afterwards. They, they, They go down the gym, they're lifting all the weights, they're working on getting super strong, and they have these things called barbells and dumbbells that they bench or they lift to get their muscles really big. <laughs> Another delivery, this guy. Okay, right, let's just come and have a look. Hello, is it the postman again? It is. Wow, the mystery postman's brought some weights. Okay, here we go. Now, do you know what this is? It is, they're like weights. It's what people lift to get stronger, okay? Now, these are pretty heavy, so I can just about do it. Oh, gosh. Okay, anyone want to come and have a go, see if they can be stronger than me? All right, B, come on then. Watch your toes. Wow. (laughs) Amazing. Incredible. All these kids are putting me to shame. Okay, now, in this verse, right, Paul... He's not saying that we've got to strengthen our physical muscles. He says that as we live our lives in Jesus, that looks like being strengthened in the faith. It means having a stronger faith in Jesus. So we, let's stick that on the end of our barbell so that we know what we're lifting. Okay, so here we go. What does that word say? Faith, right? Okay, so let's stick faith on here. Because this is what we want to get stronger in. We're getting stronger in the faith. There we go. Okay, so now that is our faith strengthening tool. So as we walk in Jesus, we're being strengthened in the faith. Now, how do we get stronger in the faith? What are some things we can think of? Well, I think we get stronger in the faith maybe by reading our Bibles, by praying and talking to God, by coming to church, by listening to God's Word taught to us. As we do those things, we are strengthened in the faith. And you don't have to wait till you're a grown-up to do those things. You can be strengthened in the faith when you're six, and when you're 16, and when you're 60, working on growing your spiritual muscles as you walk in Jesus. And did you see that Paul says it's as you were taught? In other words, being strengthened in the faith is not about discovering some new thing that you add on to the gospel. Did you know, kids, that the stuff that the adults learn in here on a Sunday, it's not different to what you do in Sunday school. Did you know that? We do the same thing, and we use kind of longer words sometimes, and the talks are a bit longer, and we got less juice and biscuits, sadly, but it's the same thing, and the stuff that I learned in Sunday school when I was eight is the same stuff that I'm now preaching from the pulpit every week 26 years later. You don't discover some extra information about Jesus and the gospel when you turn 18. It's the same thing. We just grow stronger in it, and so you want to pray that God would help you to be strengthened in your faith as you walk in him. You want to pray that God would help you to be strengthened in your faith as you read your Bible, 
as you pray, as you come to church, getting stronger in your faith in the Lord Jesus as you walk in him. That's the third thing that Paul calls us to. Rooted in him, built up in him, being strengthened in him. Final thing to see. What does it look like to live our lives in Jesus? Here's the last one. Overflowing with thankfulness. Here's the action. Okay, let's do it together. Overflowing with thankfulness. Very good. I love that idea of something overflowing. Oh, he's back again. This guy. Okay, let's um, see what he's got this time. Hello? Oh, a towel. How strange. Just pop that down there. Evelyn, I'll just sit back down there on, on the mat. Oh, another thing. Hello? Some sort of stand. Very good. This is a cool delivery, isn't it? Well, anything else? A cup. Nice. And that must be it, surely. A watering can. Hey, a watering can. Fun. Okay, let's just... Thanks, Mr. Postman. Right, he's gone. Now, living our life in Jesus looks like being thankful. What have we got to be thankful for? Let me tell you, we've got everything to be thankful for. He came as our king. He died for our sin. He rose again to rule. He's coming back one day to judge and renew all things. He's with us always. He's never going to stop loving us. He's always for us. We have got so much to be thankful for because of Jesus. And so Paul says that living our life in Jesus, walking in him, looks like overflowing with thankfulness. Now, look, Jesus has done so much for us, right? So much. He's everything. We're not just a kind of a little bit thankful. That would be rubbish. We've got way more to be thankful than that. We're not just quite thankful, you know, quite thankful for Jesus. We're not just really thankful. I'm really thankful that Jesus saved me. What did Paul say in the verse? We should be, what was the word? Overflowing, Caleb, that's right. We should be overflowing with thankfulness because Jesus has done so much for us. We just overflow with thankfulness. That's what it's like to be a Christian. We're just overflowing with thankfulness for everything that Jesus has done because Jesus has saved us and we have life and strength in him. We've got every reason to be thankful. Let me ask you, are you thankful for following Jesus? We ought to wake up every morning, even if we're finding life really hard at the moment, and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me and for working in me and for being everything to me. That's what it looks like to live our lives in Jesus. Okay, there we go. Let's say the whole of the verses together again with our actions to see if we can remember it. Together, let's remember our actions. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him and strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. And it's from Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. That is what it is to be a Christian. Final thing before we sing. Can you see that absolutely everything here is about Jesus? We received him as our Lord and Savior. We live our lives in him, walking in him. We're rooted in him. We're built up in him. We're strengthened in the faith that is all about him. We're overflowing with thankfulness to him because he's absolutely everything it is all about Jesus, and that's what the whole book of Colossians is all about, that Jesus plus nothing is everything. You've got Christ, you've got it all, and so you keep on going in him, however old you are, now and forever. Let's pray, shall we? And then we're going to sing. Father, thanks so much that Jesus is absolutely everything. We praise you. We thank you so much that in Christ we have life and everything we need. Please help each one of us, young and old, this week to live our lives in him, to walk in him, to be rooted in him, to be built up in him, to be strengthened in our faith in him, and to be overflowing in thankfulness to him, our precious Lord and Savior. Would our lives be about Christ and in whose name we pray. Amen.